In this video, we're gonna talk about all things towing when it comes to RVs, and we're gonna share from our personal experience three major factors you must consider when looking at a tow car. So you're gonna to wanna to take notes, bookmark this video, or maybe even share it with someone you know that is planning on jumping into the RV lifestyle. Real quick, we wanted to introduce ourselves in case you are just seeing this for the first time on our channel. My name is Ben. And I am Charity. This is now year five for us. Yes, 2022 marks year five of RV life and we've made some mistakes along the way. Discovered awesome hacks, made a few upgrades. This channel is here to both educate and entertain you. And people tell us in the comments, the bloops are always the best. So. You'll want to watch until the end for those. So factor number one, do you even need a tow car? Well, it is possible to RV without a tow vehicle. However, there are some things to consider if you do choose this route. You're gonna really want to research out the destinations that you're traveling to to see if there's shuttle service or ride sharing service in those places that you want to go. Last summer, for example, we got an Instagram message from someone who was staying in the St. Ignace, Michigan area, and that's the same area we were in as well, and we'd been posting pictures of Mackinac Island. Now, this family let us know that they did not have a tow car and they had a drivable motorhome. And because of that, they were not able to get over to the ferry terminal to go to Mackinac Island because there was no shuttle service and there was no Uber or Lyft in that area. Now, something to be aware of is certain states don't have these ride sharing services, most due to tax laws. So you're going to want to make sure to do your research in advance to make sure that there are transportation options in the areas that you want to visit. Now you can plan trips to grocery stores before going to the campground so you don't have to disconnect to drive over to the store or using e-bikes or regular bikes are a great alternative for local areas. So you guys don't have a, a toad? We have no How toad How are you getting vehicle? around? This is our second trip to Florida this year and both times had no tow vehicle. First time was in a 45 foot diesel pusher and this is in 25 foot little diesel class C motorhome. So, okay, can it be done? Oh yeah, totally can be done. A little more trip planning and you do it with the big coach. But this time we actually have the smaller rig, which is easier to begin with. But then we also have an electric scooter and an electric bike. So okay. super easy with that. What we did back in March when we stayed um, at Bradenton in the 45 footer, so we did two things. One is we just had to be more organized and plan our shopping ahead. And so we actually were pretty close to a Costco. So we would go for walks in the afternoon and we'd just get a few things. You can't get too much at Costco when you're not driving back. And another time we walked to the Publix grocery store and we then we did a big grocery shop, but then we got an Uber back. A lot of mopeds and motorcycles can actually be mounted on a hitch mount rack system on the back of a drivable RV. And those can provide transportation to just be able to go and see and explore without having to actually break camp to be able to go out. Factor number two car dolly or trailer towing. So when we bought our first RV, the person that sold it to us actually included a car dolly with it as part of the purchase. So we used this for our front wheel drive sedan and knowing what we know now, we would actually have brought the minivan instead. The only pro that we found is it was an inexpensive way to get set up with a tow car and really get out on the road sooner. Dollies themselves are fairly inexpensive and it requires no other wiring to the vehicle itself. Just drive up, strap on the tires, and you're off. So a pro is you can use an existing car if you already have it, and you don't want to spend much money. And if it's front wheel drive, it'll work. Another pro is there's less wear and tear on the tires, transmission. There are a few cons though too. So the tire straps will work loose with miles, so we actually had to stop quite a bit. We didn't know how to tie on the straps properly, so they kept coming loose. When we did figure it out, they still came loose. And you can't back up without removing the whole car, removing the tow dolly, everything. So think of it like backing up a wet spaghetti noodle. If you pull into somewhere, follow the semi-trucks. Don't, don't go, if, if you see semi-trucks not going there, don't go there. Follow the semi-trucks. Every time. Follow the trucks. Okay, we're going. Length of time to hitch up and load up the vehicle, install the straps, tighten down. Having to find a place to put the dolly when at a campground with a back insight. Most campgrounds have designated parking areas for dollies. 
So just like Ben was saying, it was a pain in the behind when we were using a car dolly just because of all of these factors. And the biggest one is where are you going to put it? Another thing that you've got to think about too with campsites and campgrounds is just how that site is, how big that site is, all of those things. Even when we park our tow car on the site, we always want to make sure that we have enough room. And so a new tool that we have been using to just make sure that we have the room that we need with a campsite when we choose a campsite is campgroundviews.com. Now that's because campgroundviews.com lets you take a virtual tour of a campground before you book that site. So you know exactly what that site looks like. You have a really good feel for if there's extra room behind where you're gonna put your RV, beside where you're gonna put your RV, all of those things before that you choose the site. It is a pain in the butt, especially if you are using a car dolly or a trailer or something like that, where you get to your site and you realize none of this is gonna fit and I'm gonna have to go try to put this somewhere else. So it is our new go-to tool to be able to look at those campgrounds first. You can go to gratefulglamper.com forward slash campground views and there'll be a link in the description for you below as well. So now factor number three is flat towing a vehicle behind your RV. Now, after four years of RV life, we decided that this is the way to go. We bought a Jeep Wrangler specifically for the ease of flat towing. And we literally can hook up and unhook in like five minutes or less. The tow bar folds out of the way easily when it's not in use and arriving at the campground to unhook and back into our site, super, super simple. Now, this does cost more for the initial setup. Up, and there are many vehicles that can be flat towed with certain precautions and guidelines. In the description below, I'm gonna put a link to what are called dinghy guides. This lets you know what vehicles can be flat towed just the way they are with certain precautions. For example, some vehicles have to be run every six hours to circulate transmission fluid. So our setup is we bought our Jeep used specifically because it's a very easy to just put into neutral and not have to worry about anything else when you're towing. So we initially started off using a blue ox tow bar that actually came with our first First RV, and then we bought another Blue Ox that we found used on Facebook Marketplace. Now we've recently upgraded to the Roadmaster Nighthawk and we like it much better because the wiring is built into it, it has nice light, and then we use a floor mounted auxiliary brake in the Jeep. Now we're not a fan of this, but because we want to upgrade our Jeep at some point, we didn't want something that was more of a permanent install in the Jeep at the time. However, with used car prices being what they are, we're just kind of rethinking a lot of things as far as do we want to keep the Jeep? Do we want to get something else? So we may go with a more permanent install of a braking system at some point, but we don't want to do that until that we know for sure that it's a vehicle we want to keep long term. And we're going to shell it. Shell? What are we shelling? Stop it. Ooh, crab? Seriously, because Lobster? we have a video to Okay, make. all right. Man, now, you, now I'm hungry. You're talking about shelling. Uh, I did it again. You're not allowed. They had seen our pictures and they just decided to reach out. Well, noise Whoa. pollution. Holy RV. Okay, so you can stand in the plant? No. No, I, oh, I'm okay. not standing fine, in the I'll plant. Stand in the plant. That's fine. How am I on the screen? You're fine. It's probably better if you don't even see yourself. Yeah, actually. Okay. Your window's like from here. Up. Okay, and ready? And yours is from here up. Stop it. It's tilted on its axis. And the thunderstorms are rolling. Yep. Okay. In this, is it rolling? Yeah. Okay. Boy, have fun editing this one. How's it going for you? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Let me eye. criticize you. Well, it's more fun to criticize you. Yeah. It's and not as easy on the side easy. of the camera, oh, is it? No. Now I see it. what you have to go through. Oh, and literally a bug flew in my okay. eye. This get, is now year five. I gotta get us. the bug out of my eye. Alright. <laughs> if people are saying the bloops are awesome! People do say that. Woo! Okay. okay. Next. Next. Bloopers are awesome. Like me. Oh my god, the sun is so bright. I'm gonna have to move. This isn't gonna work. So, factor, so factor number two. <laughs> You're sounding like me. I mean, it's just not worth it. Oh my god, it's so bright. It's so bright. 
the sun, the sun. You get to hold this over me. Here. <coughs> yeah, it is, but over me. Come over here, here, here. Make sure it shades me, there. Okay, up, there you go. So you'll have to let us know what are you doing for a tow car? Are you taking a co, co? So you'll have to let us know in the comments below what you're doing for a tow car. Do you have a tow car that you bring with you? Are you using something else for transportation? Let us know in the comments below because we love hearing from you, but you're also letting the RV community know your helpful hints and suggestions as well. So I'm gonna put a video up here for a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how we actually hook up our Jeep when we're ready to flat tow it. Now, if we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll see you in the next video.